We named them destroyers for a reason, I'm afraid. And less than two months in, this NDP government we have here in BC, which is supported by the Green Party, is doing just that. First, it was jeopardizing over 2,000 jobs on the Site C Dam when they sent it off for a fake review. Then it was Petronas' decision to pull out of their massive multi-billion dollar LNG project. Oh, and by the way, it's come to light now that the reason behind that decision against investing was in large part due to the NDP's position on the project and the LNG industry at large. And of course, last week they announced that they would seek to stop the Kinder Morgan pipeline expansion and the thousands of jobs and millions of dollars of tax revenues that would come with it. While BC was once leading the pack in Canada's GDP growth among our provinces, less than two months later, Premier Horgan is doing everything he can to abdicate that position. And as if things couldn't get any worse for our beleaguered LNG industry, last week the NDP government announced that they would be conducting a scientific review of fracking. This is just another nail in the LNG coffin, if you ask me. There is absolutely no need for this. The science is clear on fracking. When wells are fracked and cement castings are done correctly, fracking does not threaten groundwater. The myths pushed 10 years ago by far-left activist and filmmaker Josh Fox in his film Gasland have long been debunked, and there are literally millions of fracked wells in the U.S. and hundreds of thousands more in Canada as evidence. Fracking is safe. But for the NDP and the Green Party and their base of environmentalist donors and third-party allies like the Dogwood Initiative and the Sierra Club of BC, this is exactly what they wanted, to muddy the water, so to speak, surrounding the process of fracking. To once again instill fear into British Columbians that somehow their groundwater is under threat from this process. And yet, they'll never make the case for how fracking has helped keep natural gas prices low and affordable. The announcement came as Energy Minister Michelle Mungle was meeting with natural gas industry stakeholders in the Peace River region late last week. Mungle was apparently impressed that they are now using recycled water in fracking operations and told the Alaska Highway News, quote, The actual fracking is being done so far below from where we pull our own potable water from that it was very interesting to see. I had read about that, but it was interesting to see it up close. What's going on? Unquote. Well, if that quote doesn't confirm what we already knew, that Mungle is in way overhead on this file and her knowledge comes from what she's likely read online, I don't know, likely anti-fracking propaganda from the aforementioned environmentalist allies or Josh Fox's film. Mungle continued with another quote in the Alaska Highway News. This one a little bit more interesting because she was asked about another energy project, the Kinder Morgan Pipeline expansion, compared to BC's LNG dreams. Quote, one is for the Alberta tar sands, one is for BC. One is about bitumen. One is about a completely different product. That's a really important thing to remember, unquote. Well, if it's such an important thing to remember, someone forgot to tell your colleague and uh, BC Environment Minister George Heyman. Heyman was once the executive director of the Sierra Club of BC before being elected MLA for the NDP in the 2013 election. And the Sierra Club described BC's natural gas industry like this, quote, Fracking is referred to by some as the tar sands of natural gas in terms of the water and energy resources needed to extract the hard-to-reach shale deposits." So you see the disagreement already in this new cabinet. Now that was the Sierra Club's official position, and Heyman was in charge of the club at that time, but how does he personally feel about fracking? Well, he told the Georgia Strait in 2012 during the nomination process for his writing, quote, I'm not proposing that we don't sell any gas. I am proposing that we stop the expansion of new frac wells until we've had an appropriate public study on the health impacts, the community impacts, the water impacts, and the climate greenhouse gas emissions impact." Unquote. If you didn't already know by now, George Heyman is an anti-fossil fuel extremist. Now there was a time when Premier John Horgan was the energy critic for the NDP before he was leader, and during that time, Horgan was not a fierce anti-fracking critic like some of his cabinet members. He told Vaughn Palmer on his Voice of BC television show in 2012, quote, We've been fracking in British Columbia for a long, long time, decades in fact, and we do it fairly well, unquote. Look, that's the most sensible thing I've ever heard Horgan say. But do you wonder, like I do, if Horgan has cut a deal with the Green Party to support his government, yet then take an anti-fracking position because, well, that's what comes with the deal? After all, it would be much easier for Horgan to appease Heyman, Mungle, and Andrew Weaver and their environmentalist allies if this review of fracking goes the way I think it might and that will just jeopardize billions and billions of more dollars of investment. Destroyers indeed. For the Rebel.media, I'm Christopher Wilson.
Thanks for watching. Make sure you never miss a Destroyers video by clicking subscribe on our Rebel Canada YouTube page.